So the other day in history, I received a letter. This letter was addressed to my future self. Um, inside was mostly advice from last semester. However, there was one sentence that stood out in particular. Remember, read, to be free, you must first have a personal revolution. Now what could I have possibly meant? What I'm speaking about is a word that millions wish so desperately they could have, a word a billion people may have died for over the history of mankind, a word that is not free because lives are lost every day paying for it. This word is called freedom. Is this a word that we take for granted? Because I feel this is the most important message we can learn from America. America has been seen as a land of opportunity, a land where everyone has a fresh start. We have so many chances and choices that no one has around the world. Some countries don't have the option of education or the option to build their lives up. Opportunity is an important part of America, deeply ingrained in the history, the culture, and the people. America is the place for new beginnings. Calvin Coolidge says, quote, of course the government can help to sustain ideals and can create institutions through which they can better be observed but they're sourced by their very nature as in the people, close quote. Only a unified people can construct a well-operated country. The structure of a country solely depends on the content, character, and relationship, relations between the people. A true hero is not to be the greatest from the outside in, but rather to be the greatest from the inside out. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. In this song that is cherished by the American people almost as much as our national anthem, we find a glorious description of the land of a majestic America. After this brief description of our homes, the song states, God shed his grace on thee. This song is, in every way, describing America as a land of freedom that is solely governed by God. The next verses of the song further prove this point goes on to say, God mend thine every flaw, and may God thy gold refine. Those are both describing an America that had a higher being as the master. America used to be a place where no one was afraid to mention God in a public setting. Do you remember those days? America used to be the place that everyone wanted to be because they could pursue their dreams and not be torn down. Can you remember those days? America used to be a place where everyone could have a second chance. Do you remember? America used to be the place that everyone wanted to be because it was a constant in our ever-changing lives, remember? And cherish this, and we take these constitution and declaration, I think we take it for granted that we just, oh yeah, we use it every day, it keeps us in the nation, we don't really think about it. And that it is what holds us together. And uh, I know that we are free and one true nation under God, and we may always remember that. The Constitution is imperative for this country's survival. It protects us, but it needs our protection too. As Alfred E. Smith said, the Constitution can't lose. We can't let the Constitution lose. We must support the cause of our founding fathers, the cause of liberty. With our aid, the Constitution can win. We can win. So what will it be? Will you let others who care not for your welfare or for that of your family decide what you think and how you act? If not, change the saying. Let it say, a hero is someone who understands the responsibility that comes with this freedom and acts upon that responsibility. And then make a choice. If you look deep inside yourself, which do you want to be seen as and become? A villain or a hero? Now is the time to change our thinking and not look at history as just some class that we are required to take, but a class to learn from America's past so that we can help build America. America is the land of the free and the home of the brave. Many upcoming leaders are being taught good principles and ideals while they're young. We need to turn our leaders today back. And we can also remember our self-government. Liberty and self-government coincide with each other. Liberty is the power to do as one pleases or the power of choice. Self-government is self-control or self-command. These two ideas go hand in hand. Ronald Reagan said, quote, our government has no power except that granted to it by the people, close quote. As long as the government only exercises the power given to it by the people, and as long as the people don't give the government too much power, 
It will never get out of control and take away their rights. Patrick Henry stated, quote, Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, Almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Close quote. Oh, if only Americans believed as forcefully and as bravely in liberty as Patrick Henry or as any other founding fathers for that matter. Those who believe in America and the potential she has plead that the people of this country will remain strong through the nation's challenges. Like Smith, they encourage us to, quote, stop compromising with the fundamental principles that make us free, close quote. They fought for us and they loved us. How can anyone show disrespect for the men who started this country and made a home for freedom? Will we chant the name of the Founding Fathers until they become a whisper and finally forgotten? Why then should we be content to bring a miserable end to the sumptuous taste of liberty, which we have so thoroughly relished for nearly two and a half centuries? There is a natural and consistent desire for freedom in the hearts of innumerable Americans, and completely free we shall forever strive to be.